Okay, now come on, folk. What are we to really believe about this parable that Jesus tells? First of all, I know it's Jesus preaching there, but such great crowds that he had to get in a boat and push away from the beach? Really? Can you envision so many people worshiping with us here in the sanctuary? Folk crowding the windowsill and standing along the walls, sitting up here with Kate and me and the parlor overflowing, the choir loft full. I mean, we've studied preaching. We're faithful with our continuing education efforts. Next week, we're going to listen to Tom Eric tell us how to transform the church. But do I expect a 100-fold harvest? I'm a practical realist, and I'm not going to tell Becky to print twice as many bulletins because I'm sure we would waste our paper. And we try so hard not to be wasteful or reckless with our stewardship of paper. And speaking of sowing seeds, this screen is the result of my careful sowing of seeds. I read the labels for all my plants. I prepared the soil carefully. I planted intentionally according to the depths directed. I watered generously, especially on these hot, windy days. I deadheaded daily. I really cared for my plants. And look how haphazard my harvest is. Beautiful portaluca and snapdragons, but sad sack black-eyed Susans. None of them in rocky, shallow, or thorny soil. How to know what I did right and what I did poorly? Perhaps this parable is a picture not only of our gardens, but also of our lives and our efforts as faithful disciples. What kind of example does God set for us? Sowing seeds along hardened paths where ever alert birds can snatch them up. Sowing seeds in rocky soil impossible to establish roots for the hot, hard times that inevitably come along in everyone's lives. Sowing seeds where the thorns and briars of life's temptations, distractions of children's schedules, doctor's appointments, paying bills prevent us from germinating in the light of God's love. I mean, God's so wasteful, so reckless, so careless, so haphazard and way too generous with scattering seed every which where. What if this story isn't about us? as fruitful soil or as leached out soil, not very receptive to God's presence in our daily dry lives. What if Jesus is describing our church and our efforts at sharing our faith and reaching out to others in mission? We Presbyterians are known for our orderly, agenda-led approaches to meetings, for our strategic marketing and demographic research before we sail forth to share resources, our seeds, with others in need. 
for our careful reasoning and thinking before we seize opportunities to share our experiences of Jesus moving and breathing in our lives. Just think of all the research and planning and people hours and expertise that have gone into our project for remodeling and adding to our church campus. We'd be considered wasteful or reckless or careless or haphazard if we didn't approach such an expensive mission carefully. But what if Jesus isn't talking about us or our church here? What if this is a story about God who wildly sows seeds of grace, who extravagantly sows seeds of love, who haphazardly sows seeds of mercy, not only among us, but every which where. As prophet Isaiah reminds us, God invites everyone to a feast of thirst-quenching water, wonderful wine, and strength-building milk which is ours without money and without price. Eugene Peterson paraphrases God's words in Isaiah 55. For as the sky soars high above the earth, so the way I work surpasses the way you work. And the way I think is beyond the way you think. Just as rain and snow descend from the skies and don't go back until they've watered the earth, doing their work of making things grow and blossom, producing seed for farmers and food for the hungry. So will the words that come out of my mouth not come back empty-handed. They'll do the work I sent them to do. They'll complete the assignment I gave them. Let's turn our attention to the video. sowing God is a God of abundance. God invests time and energy on us in spite of our flailings and our failings. God's beyond our play it safe approaches. And even if we don't see immediate results, even when we see Jesus playing around with tax collectors and sinners, partying with the poor, God's word will be effective and productive. A harvest beyond our most miraculous imaginings. Much as we understand about how seeds grow through a given sequence, 
Growth remains ultimately a mystery. God's divine ways are ultimately mysterious. But to be trusted. As Jesus says later in Matthew, I will be with you to the end of the age. With such a promise, how do we respond? I believe that we're to sow seeds of faith wherever and whenever we can. Sowing seeds in the sacrament of baptism is one way that we proclaim God's word and God's power to transform us more and more closely into God's image. As my Christian education professor at seminary, C. Ellis Nelson, writes, Faith is communicated by a community of believers and the meaning of faith is developed by its members out of their history, by their interaction with each other, and in relationship to the events that take place in their lives. That's you all. As Kate and I baptize Emily Suzanne Lee in a few minutes, I ask you, all of you, to prepare for the vow that you will take to nurture her into the love of Jesus Christ by being aware of God and God's presence in your life. And then... Ask yourself how you will share your God sightings with Emily and with Kristen, whom we just baptized, and with some upcoming baptisms already being prepared. How will we be a home where we nurture one another's faith? And then... How will we carry our little seeds of faith out into the world? How will we risk ourselves for the sake of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ? Sometimes wastefully, sometimes randomly and recklessly, occasionally carelessly, happily, haphazardly, but always extravagantly, generously. Thanks be to God that our Lord is wasteful, reckless, careless, haphazard, and extravagantly generous and never gives up on showing us mercy and forever and always loving us. Amen.